Kwe TV. Ko Louise Tako Ingwa, ko Akina Foundation Tako Mahi, no Pini Ki Oho, Tena Koto Katoa. It is truly an honour to be here. This has been a significant journey for many people in this room. Um, some, for a very long time, have been discussing how do we enable organisations who deliver social and environmental good to actually flourish in our economy? And with that, how do we actually redefine what enterprise is? And the journey that we've been on in the last sort of eight to nine months is we had a door open. Uh, one, uh, Minister Parker sent us a letter and he said, I'm not too sure whether there's evidence to show that the structures that are available for businesses to do good, there's issues with. So we decided to walk through that door. Uh, and with the support of many organisations, uh, many who are here today, we really wanted to uncover what were the problems that exist for organisations who deliver impact through enterprise. As Sir Neville talked about, in our economy, there is structures where you can become a, a charity and you can, you can get all the benefits that sit within that act and you also can, or you can choose to be a limited liability company. And for probably 400 years, 400 <coughs> metres uh, to the front of the, uh, of the railway station, that worked okay. Because that was a model where the economy was able to make money on one side and give it to others to generally do good with. And that was fine. But what we've seen, particularly over the last you know, 50, 60, 70 years in our economy in New Zealand, is that's not necessarily a modern way of doing business. And it's certainly not reflective of the way Te Ao Māori is represented in enterprise. So we've got an opportunity to really think differently. So we did this report uh, and we really were problem focused. What are those issues that organisations who are trading in our economy today are finding? So we worked with 20 organisations, 20 social enterprises who are leading their industry, who are absolutely driving social and environmental change within their organisation for the society and the environment in which they operate. We did deep interviews with them to uncover what were the barriers that they faced. And that was fascinating and you'll be able to read, uh, later on today you'll be able to read those case studies um, and really get under the hood of some pretty extraordinary organisations. And a lot of people think social enterprise in New Zealand is a couple of young startups, um, and certainly they were reflected in the, in the report. But we also took the opportunity to interview and get under the hood of organisations which have 70, 80 years in our economy. Organisations like Kumana, organisations like Trade Aid. These are organisations who are deeply complex, who deliver deep, deep social and environmental impact and they are struggling. So what we wanted to do is look across the spectrum and say how could we identify those problems and of course just because Arkina means to encourage bold action, we couldn't just leave it at the problem, uh, we had to come up with what we think might be a solution. So what we're able to do is really, and I'll use the clicker, it's probably telling me off for that. Um, so the problems were, were really twofold. There were multiple, uh, there were many more problems, but these were the two ones that really shone out um, across those, those 20 companies. One of the biggest issues that organisations who deliver social and environmental impact struggle with is how do you lock that mission? Under a charity, that's easy because you must be able to do that in order to get charitable status. And there's a great regulator uh, who is able to, to maintain that and ensure that that happens. In the limited liability space, that's really hard because how can you ensure that the primary purpose of your business is locked in? How do you make sure that that's visible for a consumer, for an investor, and for an employee? So that was something that often the organisations that we spoke to have been struggling with and have to create really complex legal structures to protect that mission. And as a social enterprise ourselves, we've had to go through that same journey. And thanks to you know, some great partners, we've been able to unlock some pro bono budget to be able to do that. But it is highly expensive if you don't have the privilege like we do. On the other side, 
funding becomes an issue. Every organisation who is trading needs the right source of capital in order for them to grow and flourish. What we found through the interviews is sometimes be just because you are a social enterprise or an impact enterprise, you struggle to deal with commercial with the commercial finance. You struggle to be able to convince uh, traditional finance providers that the mission is what you're there for. They struggle to understand actually what does that mean? How do you value that? How do you you know deal with the risk that might be associated with that? So what we what we started to see was a limitation on the access to the capital that's required to deliver increased social and environmental um, impact. So that was you know it was something new for us to go into the depths that we that we did. Uh, we got some uh, fantastic case studies to show how organisations have, have have not been able to to grow and flourish. Um, and then what we also looked at was actually well what are the solutions? What do we think? Uh, are those solutions in order to be able to reduce or remove those barriers that social enterprise and impact enterprises are experiencing in, in their growth. And really, there's always going to be an education piece. That's absolutely critical. We've got to work across the ecosystem, and that's from the philanthropic community to understand what the current legislation enables them to do in order to provide early stage capital for social and, and, and uh, community enterprise. We've got to work across the finance sector so that the particularly those who are working directly with enterprises understand the value of impact. They recognise what that social or environmental impact is doing to the communities and they can take that valuation into their, their, their risk work that they might do in determining what um, capital is available. We've got to be able to work particularly with those advisors and that's the lawyers, that's the accountants, that's the auditors, for them to understand actually what is impact and how can you support an organisation whose primary mission is to increase that social or environmental uh, benefit for the communities. So that's the first bit. Sounds easy, but we've got extraordinary partners like Philanthropy New Zealand and others to be able to go on that journey and we look forward to kicking that off straight away. Um, what we also um, are looking at is what's the opportunity within current legislation? Um, of course we're not regulators, we're not legislators, but what we identified as a potential solution whereby we can put the valuation of impact into a very flexible piece of legislation called the Companies Act. So what we're going on now is a journey to try and understand what that might look like, but particularly how do we make it available for organisations to be recognised as impact organisations, a status potentially that's available to them where they can be seen to an investor, they can be seen to government, they can be seen to consumers as an organisation primarily to deliver social and environmental impact. That's a world first. There is lots of legislation that exists to support the growth of social enterprise but they are not right for a New Zealand context. So what we're looking for is a, a, the next stage is how do we work together to understand what is right for us here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and how can we work in partnership with government to potentially transform to this new way of doing business. Overarching all of that is this change that exists. Everybody here knows that business is different than what it was 400 years ago. We know now it's not enough for just government and philanthropy to solve our social and environmental issues. Business must have a role, and more importantly, they must demonstrate the reduction of the negative, but more importantly, the increase of the positive impact they can have. And we believe that an impact status within the Companies Act would only accelerate that. We know that our government, particularly, is looking at the valuation of business differently. They're doing it within the living standards framework and we believe that an impact status can demonstrate that within an economy as well. So later this morning uh, we will be releasing this extraordinary report. Um, this extraordinary report has only been possible because of the journey that we're on to establish the social enterprise sector here in New Zealand. We're doing that in partnership with the Department of Internal Affairs and about 13 ministries uh, who are all excited about the impact that social enterprise can deliver 
in order to achieve government's objectives. Um, thanks for some work that Bill did uh, last year. We believe that the size of the social enterprise sector is around about 3,711, just about, um, delivering over a billion dollars to the economy. What's missing from that slide is the valuation of the impact. That will not be one billion. It will not be 10 billion. It could potentially be in the hundreds of billions of value to our society and our environment if we have the support of infrastructure for social enterprises and wider impact enterprises to be able to flourish. Uh, so my last point and my last slide before I hand over to my friend is a really big thank you. This has been a significant journey for many people. Um, there has been a huge amount of collaboration and work across not only Akina and the Department of Internal Affairs, but particularly with our partners. And I'd like to recognise Russell McVeigh, Chapman Tripp and Stephen from Perry Fields in being able to give us the expertise from their own legal firms to help us on this journey. I'd also like to acknowledge the one person who I think has got the coolest title in the world, and that's Dr. Jane standing there, an economic anthropologist who led the research for us. Um, Jane's understanding of the human economy is extraordinary. And not only did we get such extraordinary outcomes from the research that she led, but she led us on a journey. And she led us to understand what social enterprise could deliver to our economy. So, tenakwe, Jane. Um, I'd also like to mention Jackson. Jackson is the director of Arkina Invest. Um, he is an extraordinary person in many, many ways, but he has led this piece of work from Arkina with passion, with grace, and with a deep desire to get it done. So it's been extraordinary to walk along this journey with you, Jackson. Um, what I'd also like to do is thank the organisations who took time and lifted the hood. Um, we are so privileged to work with many, many organisations, but these 20 are the epitome of what enterprise should be in our country. They are not only deeply committed to their environmental or social purpose, but God, they're good business people. <laughs> and we have a privilege of walking al alongside them. And there's a few in the room, but I'd like to now hand over to my friend Levi, who not only took part in the survey, but has been on a journey with Akina now for nearly seven years, and it's a true honour to welcome him. Kia ora.